So this is more than 25 large corporations in the past three years have contributed funding to private police foundations. New report says target. This is so the title is how target Google, Bank of America and Microsoft quietly fund police through private donations. And see, the reason this came up with the protests is, you know, trying to see things from all sides when I, when people were attacking the rioters or the looters. It's like, how dare you loot Target? That's a private business. Well, first of all, technically, it's not a private business. It's a government-sponsored corporation that enjoys a lot of government privileges as a result of being a corporation. They also pay a lot of taxes, and those taxes go to fund the police. Now, you go to the, to the point of Target, like, well, if someone's putting a gun to the head of the CEO of Target and saying, give us this money or we're going to put you out of business or we're going to make sure that, you know, a more government friendly CEO is in charge of Target. You know, you can't fault them for that. Again, it's the people with the guns who are making the threats and applying the coercion who are the real criminals. You're not a criminal if you're doing something because someone else is forcing you to do it. If it's by duress, genuinely against your will, you have to be doing it by choice to have that criminal responsibility. So then you, you talk about the situation of a, a young black man in Minneapolis. There's a terrorist organization in your city, the Minneapolis Police Department. They use fear and intimidation to achieve political and economic goals, to make money, to keep their racket going, which is exactly the definition of terrorism. Labels aside, there is a group of people calling themselves the Minneapolis Police Department, and they are doing this to you, uh, violating your rights. They're being funded by businesses that are pretending to be private. Now, is, is Target private? You know, if it's, if it's acting this way because there's a government gun to its head, then it's really just a, a government agency. It's, it's a corporation that's essentially been taken over by government so bad that it's, it's really more like the retail wing of government. Because that company is created by the government's corporate law, or at least within that framework. And that company enjoys government special privileges. That, like, for example, especially with the coronavirus lockdown, you're a black man in Minneapolis getting terrorized by the police department. And then government comes in and says, ha, ah, you're out of a job too, because we're shutting you down because you're a bartender or a, a server and restaurants and bars just meh, don't exist anymore. At least not for now. Sorry. But Target is allowed to stay open. How can you blame that guy with that experience for seeing Target? as a corporate element of his oppression, of his victimization with terrorism. So, protests over police violence and racism have amplified calls to re-examine police budgets in the United States, with several large companies announcing they are reevaluating their commercial ties with police departments. But a new report sheds light on the myriad other ways corporations engage with police forces including by donating to police foundations that don't face the same scrutiny as police departments. Now, again, like I said, if this was just, hey, we're throwing a picnic on Saturday for all the cops who aren't working that day to show our appreciation, that is, as the SJWs would say, problematic, but not creating the same clear-cut moral hazard that we see, worse than I imagined even in the story. Police proponents say the foundations have emerged as police departments based budget cuts and are a means to supplement the force with top of the line technology and weaponry. You're like, wait, 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 what? What? Yeah, what? There it is. Black and white right there. You can't. It's, it, I didn't know this was happening. I am so glad this is coming to the service now. But critics argue police departments already overfunded. They receive 20 to 45 percent of discretionary funds in cities across the U.S. And that funding through foundations allows police to operate with a little oversight. Foundations, according to a 2014 report from ProPublica, can be a way for wealthy donors and corporations to influence law enforcement agencies' priorities. Legally, police budgets are typically public documents that must be approved by elected officials. But designated as private charities, 
police foundations are not subject to the same public information laws that apply to law enforcement agencies. So like I said, if you, if you, if you host a public picnic to show your appreciation for your local police, okay. But let's see, where does that go? Well, what happens if that money that you're now spending, you're spending a lot, let's say you spend a lot of money on picnics for the police. And so now that department, they never have to host community events. They don't have to use taxpayer money to relate to taxpayers. They can use your corporate money for that. And that frees up their funding to buy tanks and guns and drug sniffing dogs and all the advanced weaponry and surveillance technology. Oh, we still have a problem here. Now, what happens if at that picnic, you know, one of those cops says, hey, you know what? My service gun isn't really good enough, but I like that one you're open carrying there, Bob. Bob, the, the owner of the biggest car dealership in town who open carries, says, you know what? I'll buy you one. But, you know, just, just for your self-defense, because I like you as a person. I like that you're a cop. I want you to be able to defend yourself. Better. That's fine. Well, what if that police department now lets him carry that weapon on duty? You think his actions as a police officer aren't going to be influenced by who gave him that? But what if it's at this whole other level now that we see in reality where corporations are allowed to donate to foundations that don't just free up other funds or help individual officers, but are buying top-of-the-line technology and weaponry for police departments. What if those same companies are then, I don't know, let's say they're also, let's say they're being very nice, very generous, and they're, they're not just donating to those police foundations, but they're donating to politicians' re-election campaigns. So now what we have is essentially a, secretly funded private police force that doesn't stop private corruption, that actually encourages corrupt individuals who want to use this system of evil for their own personal gain to manipulate it by giving money to the police. What are they buying? They're not doing this out of benevolence. No, it's because they're buying extra protection. And so now the money that you get stolen from you in taxes to fund in part the police, that money doesn't even get used to serve you. Because now the whole system is oriented towards its original purpose, which is the rich get richer and the poor get poor. And the answer is not to fight this privatization of police forces. Because that's not what we have here. What we have here is the clear moral hazard of a public system where public interests can trump individual interests, where your rights can be violated because you did something against the law, even if you didn't violate anybody else's rights. And thus any system that escapes basic accountability to the people, that makes it possible for what we see in this story laid bare as the reality of how privately funded, how corporately manipulated American policing is. And again, it's original responses, it's, it's, its original purpose is still strong and intact. Those who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. Well, it is an absurdity to think that we need criminals in power, people who steal and lie and cheat, to protect us from criminals who aren't in power. We need a government that will steal from us to protect us from individuals that will steal from us. No, absolutely absurd. The atrocity is the police brutality that we see every day. And really, 
in this situation, aside from all of the immediate victims of brutality, I feel the most sorry for the cops, who many of whom think they're doing the right thing. And they don't realize that they are the stormtroopers of modern America. They are the enforcers for the evil empire. And they have been fooled. Although a lot of them know where this money comes from. Into thinking they are serving the people rather than the existing economic centers of power. Thank <laughs> you.